Carol Lawrence, and I am the guest host for this segment of Stand Against Machine. I'm also the wife of Jeff Lawrence, who is the Independent and Libertarian Fusion candidate for District 3 in Oregon. Um, I'm also running for the Troutville City Council, but that's for another show. So we'll start off with the Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, how you doing, Laura? It's really great to be under your watchful eye. I look forward to this. Okay, tell me a little bit about yourself, but just don't tell anybody anything I don't already know. Okay. So as you know, I've lived in Troutdale for 19 years. Uh, we moved out uh, to Troutdale after we got out of law school. Uh, we have five kids. They've all went to local public schools. Uh, I work at Intel. Why are you running? Don't you have a career already? You know, I, I do have a career. Um, you know, I've been working at Intel for 13 years, and right now I'm the director of global content policy. Uh, but this past year, as I watched our country move in a direction that did not seem productive to me, in fact, because we have five kids, uh, we were really concerned about the direction and the impact it was going to have on their futures. Uh, in particular, we got to look at, at the fiscal sort of insanity that was happening in Washington, you know, the deficit spending. I mean, just the huge deficit spending. And we realized uh, that our children were going to inherit that debt. And this was just an old-fashioned slavery in many respects. They were going to be carrying that for the rest of their lives. And the other thing that was really troubling is, is I saw the loss of personal liberty and watched as our country moved into a sort of a group, one group versus another group. And, and this is, was really troubling to me as I watched the Republicans and the Democrats line themselves up. I mean, this is a really sort of a vicious debate, and a division, it's a very vicious fight that's happening out there. And it struck me and it strikes me today that we really need some independent leadership. We need somebody to mediate or broker uh, this war that's sure, happening. And that's one of the reasons I called out for a truce. But as I watch this, and I watch this train wreck, and that's something I want to repeat a couple of times. You know, this that's election, right. from so my perspective, it's not about the trains. It's about the train wreck. And because I saw the train wreck that was happening and the social engineering that was going in to make it happening, I realized that, you know, I had to stand up and take responsibility for myself and responsibility for our future as a family. And those are the reasons that I decided to run. To run. As you all know, I'm not a politician. I've never run for anything before. Uh, and so this has been a big move for us. You know, this means, this is a really important message out, and I'd like Mr. Blumenauer to understand this. That when folks like me are standing up to run against you, this is, we're like a messenger. We're like a messenger. This is a really important message for this country to take, because people are standing up all over the place, and we're just one. Well, what do you do for a living, Jeff? So I work out at Intel. I've been there for 13 years. I started my career as a technology lawyer. Uh, and what I do now is I'm, uh, I'm the director of global content policy. And what that means is uh, I broker deals mostly between the Hollywood, the Hollywood movie makers and uh, consumer electronics companies and information technology companies to do entertainment technologies, things that people know, uh, like DVD and Blu-ray disc and the next generation, which we call ultraviolet. And what I do, the skill that I bring to the table is the ability to, to find common ground among these competing interests. And we effectively make the rules, the business rules, for people to build products. DVDs, Blu-rays, these other kinds of technology products. So I understand very much, you know, how the rules really dictate the outcome. And lame rules wind up creating lame outcomes. But that's what I do at Intel for a living. And I, I also run a global public policy group. I have people all around the world. And we influence uh, governments. We influence them uh, with respect to innovation. And we teach them the policies that they should adopt, pro-innovation policies to drive their economies. And anyway, that's my job. Sort of a, a, a mixed bag of things. OK, so what are your principles? Uh, principles, that's a really good question. Uh, that's a really tough question coming from my wife. You should know by now. Uh, if any of you have seen my card, I talk a lot about, you know, like the founders did, about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which I call privacy. And that's actually one of the biggest issues, uh, I think, in this election and that we're all going to face going forward is issues associated with our personal privacy. And as we get into the healthcare debate, privacy is really important. But privacy appears in a lot of areas. And when I talk about life, I mean your life, control of your life, uh, the, your right to self-defense. When I talk about liberty, I mean personal liberty. And I like to talk about accountability, because liberty and accountability, they go hand in hand. And these are the basic principles that I bring to the, to the party, if you will, to the discussion. Uh, those basic principles, and it's on those principles that all the solutions uh, that I propose are built. And the solutions, we'll get into some solution space in a minute, but I like
like to talk about sustainability and enterprise, sustainability being applied to more than just the environment which we regularly apply it to, but also to our fiscal, our financial, uh, our, our financial situation, to our economics, and to our society as well, sustainability. And then, of course, enterprise. We're going to talk a little bit about that, I think, in a minute. But enterprise, which is the, play, is the, uh, is the engine that creates jobs. So what is your vision for American jobs? Yeah, you know, one of the things that we've been lacking uh, at the national level is truly a vision for America. And it's also something that's been lacking from our representative here in this district. But I would love to see America become the boldest enterprise zone in the world. We need to go out there and win the business on a global basis. And we're not going to do it by wealth transfers and by do it by... Uh, by piecemeal approaches to, you know, hiring a few people to build a few more roads. We're just not going to solve the problem that way. We should truly be the boldest enterprise zone in the world. And there's some things that we can do immediately right now to start to, taking steps towards, you know, job creation and the realization of that, of that vision. You know, number one is we need to be competitive on the tax side, and our, our companies are paying too much. They're just paying too much in taxes. We have one of the highest tax rates uh, of anywhere around the world. That's you're giving me a funny look, Laura. No, uh, <laughs> it wasn't. You weren't okay. Another thing. It was thing, in a trance. Yeah, you know, and so so we talk about lowering the cost of business. Uh, the other thing that we can do is, um, you know, we need to stimulate investment in our future, and so RMD tax credits and those kinds of things that will drive the innovation and provide incentives for innovation. Uh, we also need comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, we really do need to bring more talent to America. We need to, we need that talent here. Uh, immigration form is one of the ways to do it. And the bulwark of our innovative future is going to be education. We're going to continue to rely on the young and look to the future. And so we need to continue our investments in education. Okay. Um, what are your top three objectives? So top three. I get actually asked this a lot. And on my website, I've got a list of sort of a top ten, if you will, that are really pressing issues. Uh, but number one is uh, restoring respect for, for individual liberty. The groupism that we have right now uh, we're destroying ourselves, we're consuming ourselves, and I want to make sure that we take steps back towards respect uh, for individual liberty. Uh, number two, and you know, this is the first one that got me into the race, which is fiscal responsibility, because there's just a lot of insanity out there right now with our deficit spending. You just see it. Record unemployment, record deficit spending. Uh, and then number three, to be more specific, there's a much, there's a big long list there, but you know, we talk about $13 trillion in debt, and we talk about deficit spending, and actually, you know, how do we what is the biggest looming problem? And what it really is, is it continues to be the cost of health care. Um, you know, we just had a health care bill that was uh, Mr. Obama's uh, bill that, you know, Mr. Blumenauer supported. It was crammed down our throat, but didn't solve any of the real health care problems. The cost of health care are going to continue to rise over the next decades. And these are going to sink us as a country. They're going to bankrupt us as a, as a country. And so I'm going to be continuing to focus on health care and trying to fix the problems that we haven't fixed. And what we need to do is we need to bring some real competition. We need to empower individuals with ownership over their own policy. We need to use direct pay uh, systems to bring the cost of health care down. That remains a big issue, and it's something that Oregonians are concerned about because it will bankrupt us. Okay, so what have you learned in this race? Wow, what have I learned? Well, I'll tell you, first off, you know, what a disadvantage it is uh, to be uh, in a small party. Um, it really is a disadvantage uh, because all of the fundraising networks and such that have been established and all the rules, all the campaign finance rules, I mean, these were rules that were all designed to keep incumbents in power. And it's just as painfully, you know, it's just so painful uh, when you're actually trying to go out and compete with those major parties, how all of these different systems and rules have been manipulated and developed uh, for their benefit. I think another thing, uh, you know, that I've learned is how important my family is to me and, uh, and how much I appreciate your help, Laura, because, you know, I couldn't have done this without you. I'm sorry. I know that wasn't on the script, but, you know, it really is the truth, and I really do appreciate it. And my kids have come out and done parades with me, and, uh, you know, it's been absolutely priceless. And so the, the experience that we've had as a family, you know, I hope that we can go forward. I hope that it's an example to others as well, you know, that you do have the power to stand up, you and your family and make a contribution. Uh, you don't have to be someone who's a politician or big political ambitions or anything like that. In fact, we need citizens to stand up. Are we done? <laughs>